Okay, this is just going to be a video about TNA. Uh, what in the name of Christ is going on over there? But first, yesterday I posted a brand new episode of the Good Bit Podcast. It is available now on iTunes and uh, Podomatic.com. Episode number 11, the first episode post Aaron Docker life as uh, my former co-host has, has now moved to London, so it's now me on my own. And I was lucky enough to have three very talented people on the show. Uh, we talk about some musicals, we talk about some Quentin Tarantino movies, and we review Sausage Party, one of the most controversial movies of 2016 that left us in shock, and uh, that review and that fallout sort of stuff is on the new episode of The Good Bit, which is now up, which is now available to be downloaded, and I will leave the link in the description box for your listening pleasure. So please... Click on the link, see what you think, that kind of ring. Um, download the episode, subscribe on iTunes, do whatever you can. It would be fab if you could. Now, um, I was going to set up the camera and the tripod and here's my camera here and I was going to sort of do this big sort of production video for TNA but I thought, there's no point really is there because I don't know what I want to say about it. Um, I don't know, when, when I first started watching wrestling, when I first got into wrestling, uh, WWE had literally just bought WCW, the, it was around WrestleMania 17 time, and for like four years all I knew was that WWE was the was the one thing you could watch. Obviously the invasion thing happened and stuff, so I, the official day for me that WCW and ECW went out of business was Survivor Series 2001 obviously, because that was the end of that, of the company, uh, when WWE won the, the power battle. So for years it was only WWE because I thought, oh, well, the other two are out of business now. And I don't know who showed me TNA. I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was one of my friends or one of my family members. But they showed me TNA at one point. It was on Bravo. That was the, sh the, the, the channel that carried WCW. And then they picked up TNA. But then they went out of business in like 2011 sort of time. Challenge TV picked up TNA. And uh, I've always known that TNA have, have had some sort of problem. I don't know what it is, it's just always like, no matter what age I've been, no matter what's been going on in WWE, or what's going on in TNA, whether the, the TV is good, or whether the TV is bad, or whether the roster's watered down, or it's super stacked, or whatever, I've always known that TNA have had some problems, whether it be financial problems, or management problems, or whatever. So, I don't know why I've always known, I've just thought, well, WWE is like that, much above TNA. And there has been times where I've thought TNA's TV show is, is better than WWE's. Um, I've just always, I don't know, it's just always was apparent to me that they weren't perfect. And neither is WWE, but you know, as a kid, WWE is the be all and end all of, of life. Um, and I watched TNA every week, and, and you know, I'm not going to lie, I didn't see every episode of Impact, I didn't catch every pay per view, you know, since the jump when I first started watching it. But I've literally uh, just put on the newest episode of Impact there, I just saw Cody Rhodes and Mike Bennett have a great match. And. Um, it's just been like the, the talk of the wrestling world right now is TNA's problems. Like, what the hell is going on? It is crazy. So, it all started at Bound for Glory, but they didn't think they were going to get their pay per view done. And then someone, you know, gave them money, donated money to help the cause to put on Bound for Glory. And then they managed to get TV tapings done to cover the rest of the year. So, that's what eight weeks or something of TV they've done. And then they had the hurricane in Orlando. Effect. So that was like everything was going bad, didn't they have a feckin' hurricane when they did their TV show. So that pushed them back another week or so. Uh, I, talent weren't getting their money, you know, they weren't getting paid properly. The, the lights went out during Bound for Glory. It's just been a bit of a mess. But the, the sad thing about it is that TNA's TV show for the past year has been excellent. It's been very, very good, consistently good. Almost better than Raw at some points. I refuse to say it's better than SmackDown because SmackDown right now is, is the best along with NXT, but it won't count that, because NXT is, like, picking up here compared to everything else. But TNA's TV recently has been great. And Drew Galloway being a big part of that, EC3 killing it, you got Moose there, Lashley, Eddie Edwards just won the world title, that's feckin' crazy. Cody Rhodes, Damien Sandow's now there. Uh, a bunch of good guys there, and, and the TV's been really good. You know, it's, it's shown that you don't need too many big stars. I know you've got the Hardys being the feckin' best thing in wrestling right now, and they've got Bobby Lashley, former world champions, but coming from, like, they used to have Booker T and Mick Foley and Kurt Angle and all these huge names, Bobby Roode and Austin Aries and Eric Young, who are now in WWE, TNA are still able to put on a good show. And, and TNA have always, you know, they've always had a great roster, so they've never had to worry about the quality of the wrestling or whatever's been going on being bad, because it's, it's never been bad. The only thing that lets them down, I don't know, you know, what goes on behind the scenes. I don't know if it's a management thing. Um, I guess it is a management thing, but in terms of, like, booking matches... 
match to match sort of thing, that's never been a problem. It's in terms of running the company as a whole that seems to be bringing them down. Where Dixie Carter doesn't seem to know anything about the wrestling business, but she's passionate and her, her dad has a lot of money and loves wrestling, so let's buy a fucking company and run it. And then they had Billy Corgan, the lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins, uh, come in and, and be an investor. And then he fucking, he's, he's the new president of the company, which is random. So we're thinking, okay, Billy Corgan can save the company and, and Billy Corgan will, will do some nice things with it. And then they don't give Billy Corgan what he wants and he's fucking suing them. It's just, it's like, what the hell is going on? It's like they have a great TV show, like, so out, out front is great and then out back is, is horrible. It's just the company has fallen apart behind the scenes and the TV show's great. It's it's weird and crazy and, and fucking nuts <laughs> and any other word you can use to describe it. Ah, oh, it's got, I really hope they don't go out of business, right? Because it's always good for wrestling for there to be alternatives. And like it or not, people, you know, compare TNA and WWE all the time, saying TNA just steal from WWE. And it may be the case sometimes, but they are different. They are an alternative. They're another place for people to work and to make money and to be on TV doing the things they love. People who will never be signed by WWE at this particular moment, like Jesse Godders and, um, and, and DJ Z and other people like that. People who used to be in WWE, like Tyrus and, and the the Tribunal or whatever the name is. My boy Grado as well from, from ICW, my homeboy. Uh, is never going to be in WWE anytime soon. Uh, so it's good for him to be on TV making money and stuff. So you, you don't want it to go to business. However, WWE said that one of the main regrets of, of the whole WCW thing is that they never really done anything with WCW. They, they could have just, they just put it to rest and then took the, the tape library and that was them and made a fool out of it. If WWE was to buy TNA, which Dexter Carter says she's not doing, which is fucking crazy to me as well, because they're literally going to give them money to, I don't know, to continue shows or, or whatnot, but I think WWE should buy TNA and then and then continue to put on shows, but just under a WWE banner, put them on the WWE network. They'll still have lots of people there working for them. They'll have all this new talent. They'll have all this all these new eyes, because there are TNA fans out there, all these eyes on the network and on WWE. And I just... I don't want them just to buy TNA, get the tape library, put it on the network and then just put TNA on the shelf and just not do anything with it like they did with ECW and like they did with, you know, whatever WCW or any other company they put out of business over the years. It's just not the best thing to do for business because there's, there are, you know, places out there like Lucha Underground and ROH and PWG and New Japan and all these great places where you can go and make money. And TNA is one of these places. Look at Cody Rhodes, look at Damien Sandow. They, they left WWE and went to TNA and are having like a ball there because they're making money, they're on TV, they're having great matches and stuff. It's just the stuff behind the scenes that lets TNA down. And I'm sure this isn't going to be the last time I talk about this because there's a lot more to say and you know, we're literally watching the story unfold in terms of their, their money problems and what they're going to do. But I just hope after the end of the year, it's just not... That's TNA done because you know they've not got enough money to do you know anything else. Because it's bad for the business, it's bad for the guys working there, it's bad for the fans because people do like TNA because if they didn't, they wouldn't have a TV show because they still bring in thousands and thousands of, of viewers a week. So I don't know. It's weird. They're, they're, they're still an alternative. They're doing things different. They've, they've still got the six-sided ring. They've got the Hardys just like on a total highlight of their career right now. They've got the Grand Championship thing. They've got the X Division title thing. Um, and they've got fresh faces winning the world title, like um, Eddie Edwards now and stuff. So who knows what's going to happen? I hope they don't go out of business. They shouldn't go out of business. That's bad for the, for the wrestling business. It's better for you know everybody to to stay in, in in business and give people opportunities to work on TV and make money for other people. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do something else soon. I know this is, isn't enough for me in terms of giving my thoughts on TNA right now, but yeah. Let's see what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed that WWE buy them, give them money, but don't put them out of business and just, I don't know, it's weird. But their TV is superb right now. If you don't watch T TNA, give them a, a watch, give them another view because everything will help them, you know. As wrestling fans, trust me, it's best for TNA to stay in business for loads of reasons, for everybody involved. So yeah, thank you for watching. It's just a quick little um, rant, I think, I guess on TNA, not a rant, but like uh, some thoughts, some mellow thoughts on TNA. And uh, yeah, new episode of the podcast I posted yesterday it is available now on iTunes. Just search my name, which is Chris Moffat. I'll search the Good Bit Podcast on iTunes. Links in the description if you can't be bothered going on your search engine. Subscribe, download, listen, share, do whatever you can to spread the word. I appreciate it very much. And I'll be back very shortly. When's the next pay per view? Next Sunday. For uh, some mellow thoughts on Hell in a Cell. Why not? 
Until then, thanks for watching. Avafanapoli. Aye.